So I have been uh, absolutely in love with Junction Jones and the Core Joy Conspiracy. It's probably been one of my favourite comics of the year. And these guys are the creators of it, which um, we're going to dig into a little bit more of. Tom, you're primarily a poet though, right? Yeah. Uh, I've, yeah, I, I, I worked with poetry for like a long time and then uh, slowly started doing, I, I wrote a novel and then uh, started doing uh, self-publishing comics a superhero comic and then uh then we then we did this is this is this your first sort of non-superhero title then did you... uh yeah 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 are you still doing poetry i mean my wife is pushing the poetry angle of this conversation she, she thinks you're yeah like yeah the i was new surprised e. i didn't know i didn't yeah. know if you looked me up or <laughs> well, we still yeah i just back. have a poetry collection <laughs> I just had a poetry collection come out uh, from Alien Buddha Press called uh, Guanyin by the Sea, which is a, a travel poem, sort of like a travel poetry journal of uh, my first trip to Taiwan. Cool. And but so the comic is—is is this going to be your new permanent gig? Is this what you want to? You want to be a comic writer now, not a poet, or are you going to continue doing both? Yeah, you know, I did like a round. It was like a roundabout journey back to comics I, I learned to read uh through comics my mom got me uh spider-man comics and batman comics from like the right eight i would just like i was probably two and i would like mimic you know like knowing how to read them i would just memorize like the several issues i had until i learned how to read and i, I guess i've been collecting spider-man comics since i was like four years old and cool. uh, i attempted to be an artist <laughs> and it just didn't work out you know <laughs> i had to choose what I was better at. Uh, so my degree is in history. Okay. Uh, so I had to choose what I was better at, art or history. And I felt like I was a little further along with history. So I, I went with a history and like an English minor. And then I've made my way entirely back to comic books, I guess. And how, how did you get hooked up with uh, Loco? Well, Loco, do you, have, do you want to introduce yourself on that part? Ah, so, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping up with the, with the conversation. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. My art background, no, oh, it was mostly comics. I always were obsessed with it and with uh, movies, with action movies when I was a kid, and animation, of course. It doesn't matter what I try to draw, it seems to be made for a comic book. So even when I avoid it, uh, I made my portfolio about. Uh, five or six years ago, because I stopped drawing uh, for a while, and uh, I didn't thought to uh, get into comics again, because they are a lot of work, and no good pay, but uh, people asked me for doing comic books, so I'm trapped. Uh, I remember uh, why I love them so much. Because it's uh, quite fun doing them, even if they're a hassle. I don't have formal training. I'm kind of self-taught. I studied uh, how to make comics, though, in an art school when I was uh, way younger. So I have some background in uh, visual narrative. And that's it. That's so how did you guys get paid? Oh, yeah. I stalked them, kind of, just like I stalked them. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, <laughs> originally, uh, Junction Jones, as, like, I, I wanted to write it like it was a period, like, pulp novella from the from the 30s. And it was just going to be basically just like how the first issue has that long joke. The long reveal to the story was going to be that the main character was a cat, like, the whole time living in this like post-apocalyptic future dystopia world like i had those ideas and uh it just wouldn't come together you know i kept like starting stopping just throwing throwing it out starting again and a friend of mine suggested like why don't you just why don't you do it as a comic maybe like some kind of like a different medium will help you out and i said i don't really I feel like there's too much to get across you know but i'll look for an artist and if i see something you know, maybe that'll give, that'll help. And uh, just like after my son was born, I'm like just like exhausted at night, just like going through art portfolios like online. And I saw his and I'm like, I feel like this is it. Like, this is exactly what I, 
it has to look like. So then I'm like, I'm going to start writing the story for this guy and hope that he's not doing anything else and he'll be able to do this book. So I basically was writing it for him without ever contacting him. And I, cause I didn't want to contact him without anything for him to, to read, you know? So I waited until I had like, I think three script, three complete issues before I sent him a message asking him if he'd like, if he'd be interested in, in doing it. How many it's is it six going to be? issues. It is six. six okay. Six yeah. Issues. But I, each of them were rewritten as I got a page back basically. So like, as we started to work together, you know, I, it's like you learn more about the world when you're getting things back, you know, like when you're getting yeah. the art back. So I'm like, I have to, there's so much that has to be changed. I read dialogue basically completely. <laughs> I had to ask, so I, I kind of pushed him. To, okay, well, what about this? What about that? Yeah. So. Yeah, I want to yeah, give I break Luciana. A bit. Has, do you know if anyone's ever done it like that before? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's, it, it reminds me a little bit of there's a, there's a couple of role playing Facebook pages that I belong to, and every now and then somebody will be go will will just come out and go, hey, look, I'm going to start this campaign. I'm DMing this campaign. Uh, I'm I'm creating the world. Um, I've started, mm. uh, but I need to flesh it out. So can you guys ask me questions about my world, and I'll mm. answer them. Yeah. And that's kind of how they went about world building. It kind of felt like mm. you did that in microcosm with uh, with Loco. Yeah, it's interesting too because I do like to DM uh, in role playing games, and I I kind of do that. Like I'll just make, make a world where like things are happening, and it's like the characters like flesh it out. And I always see like Lu Luciano as like the director. Anyway, like you know, like if he's like feeling something different about the character, then it's I feel like it's probably was my intention. I just didn't like fully capture it. The world itself, though, how, how did you describe that for Luciano to to, to draw it? I mean, I, I remember when the, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I think you, had, you listened to our first podcast on this, right? Is, is that, is yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. And it was just, it, 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 was, it was the truth, man. I just read this DC and a Marvel title and I was like, oh, fuck, man, I'm so bored with the same stuff that I've been reading forever. And then the, that very first top panel, I remember just staring at it for like, 10 minutes ago this guy has told more about this world in gray and white tone on a quarter of the top of this page than these other two companies have done in that 44 pages combined so did you when you're when you're writing this story for Luciano and you haven't even talked to him about it are you looking at images of his styles or has yeah, he come yeah. back completely fleshed out and said this is going to be the world I felt like it was there already I just had to give him like major elements that I wanted that had to be in the world to like make it the world that of Junction yep. Jones, you know? And then I just, I feel like I just got out of his way and a, a lot of it is, you know, I told yeah. him do what, like draw whatever weird, interesting, grotesque thing you want to draw in this. Let's just go crazy with it. Yeah. I mean, it is a, it is a comic to explore. So that's brilliant. Sorry, Luciano. He let me run with it, basically. He's also very visual uh, in the sense that um, some of the layouts and the visual narrative, it's uh, very clearly defined in, uh, in, the, in the script. Uh, whatever he, he, he has a clear vision. And if he's not having a clear vision, he just give me even more freedom. So he doesn't always need to be super specific with the layouts, but when he is, I kind of always agree because uh, he makes me look, look good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Luciano, what about you in terms of what's influenced your art? I know you said you're not like uh, trained specifically, you kind of developed your own, but is there something that you used to read as a comic book reader, a particular artist that, you know, you drew inspiration from? Well, this is the more obvious influences. I mean, the, the most uh, evident, uh, you can say it's uh, Moebius, uh, Katsuhiro Tomo, and uh, a, a bunch of uh, European artists. Um, 
I don't know how to say it in English, but the genre, the style, sorry, uh, I think it's called linea clara. It's like clear line, right? Because uh, usually it's, uh, it's not even defined by the weight of the line, but uh, the accumulation of the line, and the drawing, it's always, uh, it, it's uh, rarely, uh, spotting is, is rarely used and then defined by colors, but I also do spotting. So, but my lines, the, my way of thinking the lines are, are very in influenced by all of those. I, I always uh, feel it, it's really hard to, for me to, to tell every artist that has an influence on me because uh, half I will not remember. There's a lot, but uh, for example, Bill Waters, which is not that visible in my work, but I, I really drew a lot of uh, from him, the theatrical part of the, the expression of the characters. So it's it's a it's a mix of, of stuff. I I also looked a lot at an Italian artist called Gippi, Thomas Campi. Uh, I've been looking a lot of, uh, at Thomas Campi. Um, I really love those um, stylizations of the human figure. It's just not overly realistic. It's not completely a cartoon. And sometimes uh, the shapes are very elegant and expressive. You're just coming back to the fact that these scripts really are easy to, you know, to, to draw to. Tom, do you think that's, I mean, I'm just looking at one of your poems here. Do you think, how much of your poetry is coming into these, do you think? Because uh, I, I would say I'm a gonna, lot. I don't... <laughs> I'm going to read, I'm going to read one out, okay? Let, let read the first <laughs> few lines of, is it Party? Okay. Is that one of your, do you like that one? That's what, what we it? found? Party? Is it I guess so, I mean, it's with... Standing in that kitchen, the cold tile glowing okay. radiantly under the dying oven light, late into the morning, late into the evening leaning against the loose knobs of the cold stove, stove top, coming down from mushroom acid drunk trip, holding a can of beer in my hand. I mean, there's, you know those scenes, so they, I would just feel, I mean, I'm the same as you, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't draw at all. But I've been to parties, you know, in university squat type situations, and it's, it's just fleshed out immediately without even really talking about the, the scene itself, the, the mood of it. Is that... Is that is this kind of how you script it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm like a visual thinker without the ability, to, well, with a partial ability to draw, or without the like. Yeah, I, I'm always like searching for for visuals. I, I with my writing, I think like, you know, some people want to create like an emotion. Some people want to do wordplay. I, I feel like I'm always trying to create like a single mosaic. Or like a collage of visuals uh, in the in the poem. How how did you guys get hooked up with Scout? I read Gut Ghost. I don't know if, if you've seen that book. Enzo Garza, I, I think, is the artist. It was just a single image I saw where it's like, like a ghost that's like picking up his sheet and it has like intestines just underneath. And I was like, that looks like an interesting book. And uh, I thought maybe they would be cool they would be interested in Johnson Jones, you know, since it seemed like they were willing to take a shot on unknown artists. Yeah. Who have maybe a strange, a strange story to tell. So you, you had three issues written when you contact Luciano. How, how much did you have when you took it to scout? What, what was that process? We might've had three, we might've also had three done. Right. Or was it was it four? I, I don't know if Luciano remembers. I know I only uh, I, submitted the first issue. I think we had almost two done, and uh, you had the outline of uh, all six issues to show them. That makes sense. Yeah. I sent them like the whole arc, basically. So Luciano, you got involved basically with, hey, I've written some pages, I like your stuff, but I've got no idea who's going to publish this. Will you draw it for me? Is that kind of the, <laughs> is that the pitch? Yeah, the, 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 the pitch was, uh, okay, do you want to make a comic? Okay, if I like it, uh, all right. 
and he sent me the script and it has basically everything that I would like to draw. So I said yes, uh, because <laughs> I, I've been obsessed for a while with this topic, urban planning and with uh, science fiction and with uh, some part of the cyberpunk aesthetic, not all of it. So yeah, it even had a cat. Uh, I remember I thought, oh, okay, this guy saw uh, he has a cat as, as uh, a protagonist. <laughs> this guy uh, saw my portfolio and I love to draw cats. So uh, <laughs> cat to say, okay, okay, he, he at least he can, he can handle it. So uh, yeah, and I Tom is very visual, but at the same time he's not super. Uh, heavy on the description of the thing. He doesn't need that much of a description to for you to get a feel of the mood uh, of the different scenes. So, and I'm I'm a very visual reader, of course. So, yeah, I I had the whole thing in my mind quite quickly, and I wanted really wanted to do it. Also, the dialogue was was really cool. That that's a hard thing to find. I usually when I read scripts, I I cringe at the dialogue. I'm I'm quite sensitive to it. So having the characters uh, speaking very fluidly and bantering and a bit of exposition made through natural dialogue. Well, yeah, that sold me. Yeah, the the joke. What did it run for? Four pages. <laughs> yeah, the, the motherfucker. <laughs> After we were done, I told him I thought we could have did it like two pages more. I, say, I, I think we're good. <laughs> and so, so is all six parts finished? Are, all, are we getting another joke and another issue? Was that, is that the only one? <laughs> you, you, you all six parts have... are done, yeah. I, I don't think another show, but a, a bunch of shenanigans from Tom, of course, <laughs> because uh, be, be, because he's an asshole. He, he he's having fun with uh, with narration and timing and 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 yeah. So th th that's why he's pissing some people off. You can say, oh, the, the the narrative rhythm is wrong. It's not wrong. He's fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I just I thought of, I don't think I'd seen it in a comic before. I've read I don't know how many to take it to see like that, and I just I just absolutely loved it. And as I, I think I said in the pod, I'm just so jaded with fighting in comics. It's just so you know. Oh, yeah. But then to follow it up with the gun, the shootout was was so refreshing as well because it was over so quickly. We get the, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bam, 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 yeah. Everyone's done. <laughs> I'm obsessed with like layering. Yeah. of things and I, I feel like with Luciano's like ability to do uh body language yeah you know that adds like another layer and I feel like comics I don't know if it's, it's just like a lot of recent stuff it's like the, the dialogue and narration is either like exactly what's happening on the page yeah or it's like ambiguous kind of like statements that are like relevant to like some other material that's not relevant to the story like yeah. I'm quoting from something that has nothing to do with like the narrative overall. Like there's no, there's no connection to the two things. So like for me, like the title of the story has multiple meanings. You know, the, you have the characters body language, they're saying something that's either a lie to you, a lie to someone that they're talking to, a lie to themselves, you know, but it's a, it's in the, it's in the progress of like the plot as well as like telling you about the world, the, the characters, you know, so it, like I just feel like I'm like I just want to layer, layer and layer more things on to the story. How so? How has it been received outside of our store where we're just raving continuously about it? Uh, <laughs> uh, what scouts uh, take on it? What, what what are they doing? A second print of issue one? I can't get any more of that. Do you know if any of that sort of in the works, or we're we just going to race to get it out in graphic? No, I haven't heard. I know they're looking for a schedule for the collection. Like they're looking for their on their publication schedule, right? To get the uh, the the trade paperback, but 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've heard like one of two things. It's like uh, I hated the joke. I love the joke. Is like, <laughs> it's like the <laughs> overall. Not, I mean, that's why I like. I was saying I think before you you got on was um that uh when I listened to the podcast I was like oh these guys like got everything like they kind of like they picked up like everything we were trying to do in the issue like I instantly sent it to Luciano after I listened to the podcast I was like dude you gotta listen to this one because we've had like like where we love the joke we hate the joke but not I think I don't know if they picked up all the stuff around it like I I think you mentioned like oh this was like a like I I wanted you to read it and not and not kind of pick up fully that it was a standoff the whole time right or like you know, and then go back to read it again and I, I think a lot of people missed the point that uh the cleanup crew also doesn't know who junction jones is like i think a lot of people read like straight from the protagonist only right and it's like they don't consider that like the other people don't know who he is either and they're obviously this body is something how did you know we'd done it in the pod I just did a, a Google search and I it like came up and I was like, Oh, all right. Cause of the Facebook link on the, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Also I, 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 I tag well, when I upload, I tag like you can do 20 tags on a pod. So, you know, so I could tag junction Jones in it and things like that. And I can tag scout comics in it. So then that comes up in searches. Okay. Behind the curtain <laughs> folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you you appreciated our appreciation of your uh, wonderful work. <laughs> sort of come out for that, yeah, good stuff. All right, uh, Tom. Uh, just before we let, let you go, I mean, one of the things that it's probably the, maybe a little bit lazy in terms of comparisons, but I I couldn't help mm. but read this, and you know, the art style probably helped that as well. But it, it felt like something I might have found in 2000 AD. I mean, was that ever mm -hmm. something yeah. for you? I know oh, you mentioned yeah. Spider-Man. Is it was? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I absolutely. Really that Sam Slade, Dinosaur Hunter, uh, all <laughs> the Shivang. Yeah. I yeah. was a big fan. And are, are you guys going to work together again? Uh, if this is now finished, is are you talking about something else coming up, or what's what's your plans next, Tom? If this is, are you going back to poetry, or uh, you know, carry on with comics for a while? We're currently working on uh, a, a a sequel. So ah, awesome, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, yeah we, I'm, we I'm currently torturing to, to be over. torturing Luciano with a uh, with a script <laughs> for the first issue. Yeah. Completely clear who the characters were. Have, have we got a working title? What is that? Junction Jones and the Cordial Conspiracy. Uh, oh yeah, two, it was going two. to be <laughs> right now the working title is yeah. Junction Jones and the death and crimes of the bounty hunter valentine green oh nice so it's longer <laughs> god damn it <laughs> yeah we gotta go longer <laughs> we can't go shorter we gotta go longer with it well, you're, you're oh. going to be all over the cover man <laughs> give me a break <laughs> You're just gonna have to do it like the intro to the I intro to Star that. Wars, and just have like just words up the page. <laughs> Maybe we'll do the words really small so you like can't read them on the on the title. People won't get it. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, that's awesome. We we were gonna do a book, but we're not gonna bother now, Ari Ricardo. We're no, just we're not. With this, this is um, this is not our format, folks. We've just this is. Tom Pescatore and Luciano Gonzalez are the creators of Junction Jones and the Corduary Conspiracy, which has been by far my favorite comic of the year. Unfortunately, issue one and two are sold out at both Diamond and Luna. I don't know if Tom's going to be able to kick Scout into doing really? the second print. Yeah, I can't. I've tried to order some more. I can't get any more. So we're, we're now down to issue three. Awesome. But oh, wow. there is going to be a graphic novel coming out. And as soon as we know about that, we'll be, we'll be pushing that as well. So... You can jump on issue three without reading issue one and two because issue two yeah. was so different to issue one anyway. <laughs> As a part of me, I was like, wait, I oh, know it's, it's still got that long ass title on the front cover, so I'm definitely reading the same book, but man, did it go it's somewhere sideways? Book. Yeah, so I'm sure three, four, five, and six are going to do um, something similar to that, maybe, but maybe. I'm looking forward to them. Guys, I really want to thank you for your time. I appreciate your input here and your, and your book. Great stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having us, guys. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Go well. And uh, Tom, hopefully now you can go chuck a, uh, chuck a line in the water and uh, relax and live up to your surname. Yeah. <laughs>